って。Welcome to Coffee with Colleen. We have a special guest with us today that's going to tell her background and her story and how she lives her faith in the entertainment industry. Her name, I'm going to read her bio for you. Her name is Brenda Lorena Garcia. She's a Latina American professional stunt woman, actress, public speaker, and an, a former award winning multimedia journalist. She's the host also of an upcoming radio program. And podcast show on Virgin Most Powerful Radio. And above all, she is a grateful and redeemed child of God who sincerely dreams of helping make the world a better place. And so we'll be talking to Brenda today. And I'm so glad that you, we were able to finally connect. I know I've, I've said this before, anytime I'm trying to in, interview someone or getting together and the technology gets really bad or we have a problem connecting, I know it's going to be good. And we had that when we did our pre-interview interview last week and we had it again today, didn't we? Yes, we did. <laughs> we must have something good to say and I hope that the Lord really does uh, speak through us. So Yeah, I, I'm <laughs> sure it's going to be great. I'm sure it's going to be great. You. So your background, first of all, I mean, I think people need to know that that even though you do look like a teenager, you are not. You actually have a master's <laughs> degree. Yes, I do. And honestly, this is a little something that is in the works and it's, now it's public because now I'm saying it, but it was going to be a secret. <laughs> but anyway, I have been looking into PhD programs for a long time. And so this is an ongoing thing that if it's God's will, I'll be a candidate soon. So we'll see. But it's all in the works if it's God's will. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So you're fascinating when we had a mutual friend actually connected us. Yes. And uh, she's a very private person, so I'm not going to use her name. Um, and she said, uh, you know, oh, you got to talk to Brenda. I'm like, oh, okay. And, and you had a funny story because of that, because it was, she blocked her number when she called you. Tell me about that. Yeah. So she, it's so funny because I had a talk that I was doing, a live talk, and I had about 21,000 people who signed up for this talk. It was my first international talk. Um, and I was basically, I called my mom before this talk, like about an hour or so before this talk. And I said, mom, can you just say a quick prayer for me, please? Because, you know, it's my first international talk. It's going to be in Spanish. And I just want to make sure God speaks through me, please. And that the people will receive this message of his uh, with an open heart and things like in that, in that way, in that sense. And then my mom's like, don't worry if, you know, if you need any help, just call Jesus 1-800-HEAVEN. I was like, mommy, you're not helping me, right? <laughs> it was so fun. It was really cute though. But I was like, mommy, can you just tell me that you're just, yeah, sure, I'm praying for you right now. You know, that was like my consolation. But anyway, it was really cute. And we hung up, she went back to work. And right when I hung up with my mom, I get this private phone call from this mutual friend that we're talking about, but I didn't know because it, it was private and I never met this person before, before that moment. She calls me and I'm like, hello. She's like, hey, is this Brenda? And is this like your address, phone number, email? And she, I'm like, uh, who is this? I, I don't know who you are. And you're asking me for private information. I don't just give that away. And she's like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm such and such. And I work with EWTN and I just wanna make sure you still want your stuff up to date and all that stuff, updating my profiles basically. And I was like, oh, sure, yes, that's correct, whatnot. So basically fast forward, she goes, by the way, um, in a nutshell, that was your guardian angel who spoke through you. I was like, what, how, how does this woman know what any like about what's going on? She goes, yeah, because you told me you weren't gonna answer this private call and you did and now i'm going to have you know all the franciscan friars at ewtn pray for your talk that's coming up and you know within the next 15 minutes we'll have everyone praying for you and then she basically led me to opus angelorum which is now a place that i'm doing my formation in and yeah so that was my guardian angel and it's led me to so many other things and it's just been amazing she's a blessing 
And yeah. I, I'm, I'm a little worried because I never answer calls that are either if they have a blocked number or I don't recognize the number. I figure if I've got like your phone number, I have that in my cell phone. So if you called me, your name's going to pop up on my screen and your beautiful headshot. Um, and I'm going to answer the phone. But if it was just a phone number, I wouldn't answer it. And if it was blocked, I would never answer it. So now I'm getting a little, I'm like, maybe I should. Uh, that's what somebody else told me. Like, maybe I should start answering more <laughs> private calls and get blessings. I was like, look, I never answer them. But when, yeah. I, when the call was coming in, uh, I had was that like, feeling. I had this feeling, but I silenced it. I didn't decline it. I just silenced my phone because I was like, no, I need to focus on my talk. I'm not going to answer this. But then right. I felt this little urge inside me, like this movement say, you need to answer it, even though I silenced it already. And right before, you know, it's about to stop ringing. I, I was like, okay, I answer. And it was that lady. Yeah. And, <laughs> and then we became friends and so many beautiful things have developed and unfolded after that. And I think that's part of like, when you feel, when you're connected, you know, in your faith and, you know, when you have that gut feeling, and I especially, I teach women this and I work with my clients mm -hmm. of, of how to follow your gut, because there's so many times that we're in a situation where we're like, yeah, my gut just, something just didn't feel right. I just didn't feel right in my gut. And especially as women, we don't want to hurt other people's feelings, but I think yes. we need to respond and understand, and it's my personal belief that I think it's our guardian angel speaking to us, you know, um, but to really tap into that intuition or that spiritual feeling and knowing when to answer the phone and when not to. <laughs> yeah, but you know, it, it's it's not as easy as it seems because people are like, well, how do you yeah. know? You, how do you trust your gut instinct? Because people might confuse, well, the gut or the flesh, like, well, you right. have to know the difference between the passions and what's of God, the discernment right. of spirits. So I was blessed to have gone through a 10 week program of Ignatian spirituality through the oblates of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And that has provided me so much insight and wisdom. And uh, it's just this, it's this type of uh, soul food that just has no price tag to it. It's amazing, uh, infinite value and worth and basically it helps you discern what's from God and what isn't and then from there I even you know I got even more enlightenment of what you know how my guardian angel helps us and how the demons tempt us and so it's just very beautiful I highly recommend it to all the listeners to look into like the Ignatian spirituality um D discernment exercises and things like that to help right it, we'll have to get a link for that but um when we're done so that i can include it in the show notes sure so all right so we we can go on about that kind of stuff all day long I know. and we might get back to it i know we will actually <laughs> so tell me a little bit about you of course of course now you're working as a stunt woman in hollywood mm -hmm. and I, I think you've also done some speaking roles on different things so you're really and i looked at your imdb page and i went oh I, i've seen that I remember that scene and then I watched your reel and I'm like oh my gosh so I mean you're not, you're not just like oh I'm an actress and so you know in Hollywood no you're an actually a busy working active on big shows and stuff by so, the grace of God and for his glory <laughs> yeah and it's it's one of those things now I know a little bit about your story I don't know everything so mm -hmm. I want to learn a little bit about I know you grew up in Southern California and then, but you weren't, nobody in your family's in the entertainment industry. And it wasn't like, you know, mom was a big star and got you involved. It means right. so there's a way that, that you were guided into this industry. And I want to, and then I want to dig into how you maintain your faith because I've done some work on some movies and some, you know, little things, little tiny things here and there, you know, so I know the temptation of being in the industry and, and things that are presented. So I want to dive into how are you able to maintain your faith and work in this industry? <laughs> I don't want to call it like an evil industry because there is, I know a lot of very good people that work in the industry. Um, and and I, I know somebody that, that teaches script writing. And so she can have Christians go in and work on, for example, uh, we were talking before we started recording about working on a soap opera. And so she has people as Christians that are writing for soap operas and they're big. Oh, cool. Yeah, they're like so happy and excited. They'll call her and say, guess what, Barbara? I wrote a script and it was accepted. So now this girl is not, you know, as a teenager, now we change the scene. So she's yeah. not going to sleep with her boyfriend. Oh, that's We've awesome. actually been able to change the script where she, she sells them. No. So there's the, there's these, I little, love that. Right. Oh, praise God for the Christians in the business. We need them. Yeah. So I want to talk about that. So, so tell me about your background. You grew up in Southern California and, and how you got to where you are now. 
Wow. Okay. <laughs> it's, I, I could like, well, I feel like my life is a movie and I'm not even exaggerating just because I'm, I've always been a very meditative person and uh, which I believe it now that is a gift from God because I realize that a lot of people don't have that gift to recognize those things that we were talking about, just like the discernment, what comes from God and whatnot. But basically the, uh, I grew up in Los Angeles, born and raised. And uh, I always had, you know, dreams of being in Hollywood because I've always been the performer type. I love entertaining and I just love this type of work. I've always loved it. So I grew up, you know, in school, taking theater performance classes, singing, music, dance. I mean, everything of the creative arts, everything you can think of. And so, um, you know, I did it for fun because I was growing up in school and, you know, it was something that we could do, but I didn't think I would study it and eventually actually work in it and make money in it. I just didn't think it was really possible. I know it sounds like a lack of faith there, but it just seems so far-fetched because most of the world doesn't do it. It's really hard. And I knew that you have to be like, you know, related to somebody or something to get in. And so I just thought it probably wouldn't happen, but I didn't close that off as a, you know, it's no longer a possibility. It was always just a big dream. But I nonetheless continue to live my life honoring God in, in, in the joy he has given me. But I studied, I don't, I, wouldn't know, I don't know if it would be a more traditional route, but I ended up going to college and studied like my, I have a double, uh, double associate's degree. I have one in, uh, I'm looking at it right now, liberal arts and sciences with social and, beha um, social and behavioral sciences. And the other one is liberal arts and humanities. Um, so that one did the more theater stuff, music. And then I have a double bachelor uh, from Cal State Northridge where I studied uh, my bachelor's in broadcast journalism and Spanish language journalism, where I went to work for Telemundo in Los Angeles, which is like a Spanish NBC affiliate. And uh, right away that summer when I graduated in spring, I started in that summer right away with my master's degree program uh, at Loyola Marymount University. And I got my master's in counseling psychology and finished less than two years later. I was very, very motivated, very ambitious young girl. Graduated by like 23, 24 years old, my master's. And as you can see, everything I studied was always like something different because that's the kind of person I am. <laughs> <laughs> and I uh, always enjoyed it. I have no regrets about that. And I've used a, a little bit of all of what I've studied in what I do today. So it's not like it's irrelevant at all. And, uh, but in the midst of that, I've, as I was graduating from my bachelor's transition to my master's, I actually started to get my foot in the door into stunts. And this is how, well, um, I was on the set and a young girl comes up to me out of nowhere. And I'm just enjoying my, you know, being in this environment. I'm by myself. It doesn't bother me being by myself. And I'm just enjoying the environment, watching everyone do their thing. And this young girl, there's like 300 people. She comes out of nowhere from like the back of the bleachers. And she comes and she sits next to me, this total stranger. She goes, hey, I'm Tara. What's your name? I'm like, hey, I'm Brenda. <laughs> she starts small talking with me and I enjoyed her presence. And so I just kept talking and she's like, so uh, you know, what is it that you want to do? She saw me as this young girl with lots of energy and enthusiasm. And I was like, oh, well, you know, someone saw a star in me a long time ago. And this is true, but that's a whole, it's too long of a story. <laughs> but, you know, I've always wanted to be like a, like an, an action actress, but I don't know if that's a thing because it's either an actor or you're, you're like a camera person, in my opinion, back 10 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't, you know, well formed in the movie industry. And so, uh, and I was like, I, I always wanted to be like this, like action type of actress, like, you know, Angelina Jolie or like Michelle Rodriguez or something cool, you know, because I grew up loving like fast cars and fights and all this adventurous stuff. And she's like, oh, that's cool. That's a real profession. And I was like, cool. Well, that's what I've always wanted to do. No, she's like, seriously, it's a real job category called stunts. And I didn't know that. <laughs> I had no idea because... Like I seen stunts, but I thought the actors themselves did it because it's just so seamless. I didn't know they had stunt doubles. I was I was that ignorant. Right. <laughs> and so I didn't know. And she's like, yeah, seriously, it's called stunts. I was like, okay, well, that's what I want to do. And then she's like, awesome. Well, I told her about my background, of course, as I, I was mentioning to you, I did gymnastics. I did some martial arts later in life in my 20s. Um, but then in between the gymnastics phase to later starting MMA, I, you know, I did skateboarding and I just did a bunch of different sports throughout my high school years. And so 
um, I told her those things and she's like, oh my gosh, yeah. So stunts is a real thing. I said, well, that's what I want to do. She goes, cool. My dad's a stunt coordinator. <gasps> oh my word. <laughs> I was like, well, cool. I'd love to meet him someday. She's like, oh sure. He's standing right over there. I was like, oh, divine providence. <laughs> it was so funny because in that moment, I wasn't thinking like, oh, this providential thing. I was just so no. in the moment and so happy. And I just followed her lead. And she's like, daddy, daddy, this is my new friend, Brenda. <laughs> and I didn't know that her dad was this legendary stuntman either. And so, and so anyway, she introduced me to him and he ended up hiring me on my first stunt job ever. And history was made from there. <laughs> and so wow. I'm so thankful for them. Yeah. How did you end uh, What? How did you end up being on set? I mean, it's, this is totally outside of your circle yeah. of. Yeah. Yeah. Well, cause as, as I I was working as a reporter and there was a set, but like we were on a okay. break and uh, you know, during the time that I was collecting sound bites for other reporters, I was kind of assistant since I was newer. Oh, okay. um, yeah, so um, it, it was outside, it was like, it was lunchtime or whatever, and there was a set. And it was like, an, like, it wasn't like, it didn't look like a closed set because I didn't notice anything. And, uh, and at the time I did like, I was, I started off doing background before I even did stunts. So this was like, something that I didn't even know like it was a possible transition and so at the time I was you know standing in at, on shows too and so I had that opportunity and that's how I came about being on that set and that's how I met she and I met and that's how I ended up meeting her dad and that's how I've been getting to sex with her. Wow yeah because <laughs> yeah. I you know if 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 you haven't been in Southern California it's it's kind of funny. You can be just walking down the street and all of a sudden you're tripping over cables and then. Yes. Isn't you're that funny? On, you're on, you're a, on set. a set. You know? I know. <laughs> I'm like, oh, sorry. I didn't know. And I had a friend of mine who was, she was out, absolutely no acting experience whatsoever, nothing. And she's out in Southern California. She was in LA at a, at a business meeting and she had like three or four hours between these two business meetings. And so she was walking down the street, literally tripped on some cables. <laughs> and didn't realize that she was now on set. They were shooting and, you know, and she just kind of like walked right on. Yeah. And so they were like, actually, we can use someone. And so they had, they just handed her a script, had gave her a couple of lines and said, you fit, we need a waitress. And she's like, I got a couple hours to burn. And so they put her in, get her, send her to costuming. She gets changed. They give her a couple that of lines. They hire her as a waitress. She's a multimillionaire. No way. Like, Sounds like fun to me. <laughs> It's amazing because sometimes things like that actually happen. But like, <laughs> like I was even walking down the street one time, like years ago, and uh, I had no idea they were filming something. At this point, I was already in the business, but it didn't look like a big set because they were inside of a, like a like a comedy club or something. Right. And uh, someone's like, "Hey, uh, are you busy? Because we can use someone inside." And I was like. I was like, what is going on inside, you know? And so I had to find out the details and they made me fill out some confidential stuff. And I was like, oh, cool, okay. <laughs> but yeah, it's just cool how that just happens in Hollywood sometimes, but Hollywood has moved to other hubs now. You know, they're in Atlanta, they're in Canada, they're in New Mexico. So Hollywood is expanding. It's been- uh, Very much. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think I told you before, a friend of mine is a photographer, a cameraman, and he's up in Vancouver. In Canada. So he does all yeah. his stuff up there. and. Um, I know I was up in Michigan for a while and they changed all their, their rules and laws for filming. And so a lot of things were shot in Michigan for a while. And the Michigan's like, Hey, we're missing out on money. So they started taxing and Hollywood moved someplace else. <laughs> so yes. they're always moving around, but yeah, because they get supposedly more tax benefits, like in other States and stuff. So right. Well, and you were telling me before, because we're recording this at the end of January of 2021. And you said that they just shut down production again. So you're between. Yeah, this is like a like a hiatus phase where you basically everybody, unless there's some sort of exception that I don't know about, but we right. got an email through my union, my guild, that you know um, there have been new temporary shutdowns until further notice, or hopefully, you know, late January, early February. So hopefully things will start picking up again. Right. But they just kind of are doing this supposedly for safety precautions, taking those extra measures. So, you know, uh, and I don't say supposedly because I don't believe in this virus, but, you know, I know that there's sometimes that I feel like maybe, you know, I don't know what extreme is. Is it, you know, like for our churches, I don't feel like, you know, they should have been shut down, but that's a whole other topic. Yeah. But anyway, so we were talking about how do I keep my faith? Yes. 
Yes. How do you keep your faith on set? I mean, or, or, or have you not run into problems? I mean, I have you're... ran into problems. Okay. And uh, I, you know, I, you know, I had a problem before I had my reconversion or reversion back to the faith. So before I had my new encounter with God years, a few years ago, I had a lot more temptations to compromise for certain roles. Cause I was like, Ooh, the money and the, the other fame possibilities that will lead to more possibilities to make more money. And that was a true temptation. And it's kind of embarrassing now, but it's a true story. I mean, if you're a Catholic or Christian in the business and you have really encountered Jesus, you'll know that this is like unfortunate that you even thought this way, you know? But because once you encounter Jesus, you never want to even be the same again. And right. but yeah, at the time I had these temptations because like the money's good and the opportunities that come with other opportunities. Um, so then, yeah, I struggled and I would ask like my family or other people that I know, like, should I do this? Even though I knew I shouldn't do it, but it was so tempting. But thankfully, I didn't end up doing it. So that's the good thing. I didn't end up doing certain roles. That would have so probably like, let me, take let off me, my clothes. Let me dig a little bit. Okay, that was what I was going to Let me dig a little bit deeper and and like mm -hmm. what specifically, and you don't have to name <laughs> names. Some of it was names. sexual. Yeah, like, but you don't have to name names of shows or whatever. But it was okay. like, okay, so I auditioned for this role and I got it or I didn't get it or or I was on set. And went, so it, it was it more of an impurity thing where oh you yeah were... i was totally being offered the role to do a job where i'm i'm naked and you know and having sex or not really having sex but about to it would be a sex scene yeah or, it would be a yeah. sex scene and i was just like well that part wasn't the one i questioned like oh the temptation that that was a different role that's where i just had to take off clothes and you know, I was in a bikini and the top falls off or something. And I was like, that's not too bad. And that's what I was thinking back then. And it is. And <laughs> that was the one I was tempted about. So there's the detail on that. But the one where I was being asked to do the sexual stuff. And I, I was so offended by that. And this was a little after, like, I would say a year or two after the other scene I was telling you about. That was, I was so completely offended by that. I was just like, oh, I just, I shred what I read. And I was just like, I can't believe. I'm even being offered this because I felt like a total object. And I was like, mm. this is not right in any way. And yeah, I got really mad. And I said, I don't, I don't want anything to do with this. You know, that's interesting, Brenda, because I know people, um, like my background was, I, you know, I did a lot of modeling and acting and that's how I put myself through college. I paid for college that way. Um, and I was just lucky enough that I was never really, I had a really good agent and she protected me. She knew my mom. <laughs> And so she protected me and she wouldn't even send me on auditions for things that she knew would be compromising to me or my family. Um, and I was not anywhere near in my faith at that time. So I think God really protected me and my purity because I had this amazing agent, God rest her soul. Um, but I know so many people who said and told me and encouraged me because it worked for them. And they're names that people would know. I mean, and these are people that I worked with in New York and, and this is what they did. They chose to do like a topless photo shoot for Playboy, or they chose a role because they said, well, because not everybody will do those. So when you do those types of roles, it skyrockets your career. And it did for them. Yeah. So it's selling and, your soul to the devil. I uh, know. You know, what did the profit of a man if he, you know, sells a soul, right? To gain the whole world. Exactly. So, but do you feel that by turning down roles, has that um, stifled your career? You know, by the grace of God, I don't think so. I, I feel so blessed and protected. I was really afraid at first, honestly. I was like, I was afraid I'm, I'm not going to even have a career anymore anymore because people are like well i don't want to get into too many details with certain relationships because i know this is public right. um but i know that i've had to confront certain people about it and say you know i'm a christian and they would say well good luck being successful in hollywood as a christian so i had people tell me that kind of stuff and i was like you know at first i was offended i was hurt and i was actually worried about my future and then i was like oh i have nothing to worry about because the just one will always win and so and but at the end of the day, the Lord, my God, is my provider. And no man on earth could ever try to ooze me into thinking otherwise. There's just no way. 
God will always be my provider. And only faith can convince you of that and actually having that encounter with God. And so I encourage anyone and everyone who listens to something like this, to, when you have a challenge where it might compromise your faith, to never do it because your faith will save you and you'll be glad you stood up for it and you will be rewarded by God. And so uh, I've been, I feel even more bold now to come out and speak about my faith proudly because the Lord will is and has shown me he has protected me. And I've been thankfully living that way. I, I'm not, I don't feel so closeted anymore. Um, the Lord says uh, through the canticle of Zechariah in, in, you know, in, the, in our scriptures that blessed be the Lord God, our savior. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty savior, born of the house of the servant, David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies in the hands of all who hate us. He, he, you know, he kept his covenant through Abraham that he would uh, say uh, he would protect us, that we would be able to free to worship him without fear, you know, um, holy and just righteous in God's name. And so I can live and proclaim that. And as believers of the faith, we should be able to, too, to without fear, live worship and love god without fear and so that's what i'm hoping for and it does require faith yeah i know um i can't name drop <laughs> i want to use a name but i can't use it um and i don't feel comfortable using it but somebody that i know that i worked with a number of years ago who everybody would know this person's name he said because of his faith he felt that he was denied roles oh okay I mean, just because people knew him oh, and knew by his the faith. way, I do feel like there's some people that might, I mean, I, I have no confirmation, no actual assurance of this. Right. I have just this feeling, this sense that hmm, some people may not rather work with me because they know I'm an right. open Catholic or Christian and that's totally okay. Right. And, you know, if, um, you know, I think talent and character, character on its own will take you further than any talent because talent can be stripped from you, but your character will last because you can lose an arm or a leg or something, but your character, your virtue, your soul remains. And that's what actually gets to heaven. Nothing else does. Right. So I'm not concerned. I have nothing to worry about. Now, look, there are amazing people like, you know, who like someone you may have mentioned that I might know who you're talking about. I don't know. Right. But there, yeah, we are persecuted for Christ's sake. We are. And I am. Mm -hmm. And maybe, maybe some people just won't hire me. That's okay because I'm living for God and not for man. And that's what matters. That's what, he's my happiness, my joy and my fulfillment. And, and, and so long as I know that someone closes the door, God will open two more doors for me. And I'm living that. And hallelujah, praise God, because I will keep fighting this good fight as hard as it is. But I do ask for your prayers that all of you pray for me. Cause it's not easy, but I'm sure you're the minority on set. No, oh my goodness. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like an outsider completely, a total outcast. I do to, I, I don't want to make you uh, see, like, I don't want to make it seem like I'm so like, you know, uh, I mean, people do love me and respect me and I'm grateful for that, but that's not to say that um, there's total doors and walls up everywhere, everywhere else. I mean, there. You know, I'm very thankful that there's people that just have admired me even before they they knew I came out as a Catholic or whatever because they love me for who I am. And those are some good people, genuinely good people. Right. But then there's uh, people who never really cared because of their pride and ego. And that's okay. I'm not here to please man. So, so, let me, so let's give an example, like give us a day in the life. So you're on set um, and are you just kind of like, I'm just going to live my life quietly and I'm, I know, or I mean, how, uh, well, well, just give me a day in the life, like a, a situation. I don't, I don't, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that question. I don't premeditate <laughs> my days like that or plan it out in that sense. I kind of plan my future in a different way as a business entrepreneur type of girl, but mm -hmm. that's a different way. Uh, I start my day every single day with prayer. God always comes first and daily mass at 6.30 a.m. Unless I'm called to be at work before 6.30, then I can't, but God understands. And I try to make up for later right. afternoon or it's not, a, it's not like I'm obliged. I just do it because I love God and I thank right. him and I desire the sacraments every day. Um, so that's how I start my day. And then I offer it up to my God and I say, may this day go according to your will. 
and and I go and I go about being my happy, joyful self. I love everybody. I treat them with the utmost respect, like a king and a queen. Why? Because I was raised by a king and a queen. And so long as I know that, I have no reason to mistreat anybody or judge anybody for the way they look at me, for the way they treat me. They don't. Besides, that's a reflection of who they are. I say that your perception of me is a reflection of you. My reaction to you is an awareness of me. Right. And so uh, at the end of the day, if I feel any mistreatment or some sort of judgment or something harsh, rash coming from someone else, it's not about me. It's about them. It's a right. reflection of who they are. If they don't, if they don't like to receive uh, someone who excludes joy or happiness and true genuine desire to see people happy and whole and free, then that's their problem. And I'm mm-hmm. not going to force myself or impose my values or beliefs on anyone. Uh, I think St. Francis, this might be attributed to him, says, preach the gospel at all times and when necessary, use words. Exactly. I do my best to not talk. I really right. don't like to talk that much. You know, I mean, I like to talk to you and there's people <laughs> I, I could talk to right. for hours, but I don't go around just saying, look at me. I'm a holy Christian girl. Look how awesome I'm. I live my life pious. I don't do that. I'm just happy. I love playing silly games with people. I love being funny. I love being giddy. I just, I'm, I'm just trying to be myself and that's who I am. And I, being Catholic or Christian didn't take that away from me. It just made me take who I am more seriously in a moral sense mm-hmm. and, and for the respect and treatment of others um, because God is great. So that's what it's done. <laughs> <laughs> and I, you know, I feel that we, in people who, you know, there's a lot of time on set where you're just sitting around doing nothing. Yeah. You know, um, and, I love making friends with people. I don't yeah. care who they are. I don't care if they're a different religious belief. I don't care if they're a different uh, race. I, I, I don't care if they're um, homosexual or transgender. That's not, I'm not anyone to judge. That's not my right. place. I'm not going to go off and telling people that's not who I am. Now, right. now, if I know you, if you're my family, if I loved you for a while, that's a different story. There's fraternal correction involved. But right. the, that's where admonishment comes in. That's a corporal work of mercy. But if I don't know you, I have no place to tell you who you are because I don't know where you stand with God. So that's right. not my place. I'm not called to go tell people everybody's wrong and I'm right. It's not right. who I am. So, <laughs> well, and I, first of all, that's a great, that's, that's how Christians are supposed to be, right? Stay in your own lane. <laughs> Fraternal correction has its place in its, your sphere of influence. But we don't know other people's, and I think we were talking about this last week. We don't know that we don't know other people's stories. We don't know where they stand at that moment with God. God yeah. invented. And you if know? you come in with this judgmental, like, or, or just like pushing your faith, or you know, you can end up pushing people further away from God and not the opposite of what God. It's means. the opposite of what God. That's why like we're called to love mercifully. And when right. you do this, have this compassionate love for others. It's beautiful because you're humbling yourself. You're, you're putting others above you and that and I'll say that in a weird way like oh no. everyone you know there's a it's hard to really describe what I mean by that but it's really about having that courteous that like our Lord was a gentleman you know what I mean like right our so is our guardian angel they wait until we invoke them so I'm not gonna be like I'm coming in and I'm gonna tell you what to do and right I wait for the invitation and that's when you have to be res- receptive cooperative and meditative on this Holy Spirit because you will be called at a certain moment to go minister to somebody. So you have to be aware of that. And that's what I do. I wait for my moment because I have been sent on mission and Hollywood is the hardest Calcutta I could ever imagine. And that's my that's my mission is in, is in Hollywood. And so God willing, uh, with his grace and his help, I will. In a way, it sounds like you're like, you're so surrounded by not Christians, right? Totally. Um, or people that aren't acting in a Christian manner or it doesn't even have to be Christian. I mean, just somebody that is not an, adding in a virtuous or, or honorable manner. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it's almost like, I don't want to say easier because it's definitely not easier when, mm-hmm. you know, most of a higher percentage of people around you <laughs> don't share your, your belief system, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it's almost like, okay, well, whatever, I am who I am. So take her to leave it, mm-hmm. you know? Um, but living a pure life, I guess, in an impure surrounding. Cause I remember when I first went to Southern California and I had a bunch of little children, I had four little children at the time. I just looked around, I'm like, 
I don't get this. I mean, it's just, <laughs> I mean, even, even it's like, on the news, it's like, what's with I know. The low cut tops and the, <laughs> that's not the industry. That's not when I Oh, Spanish news here. is worse, by the way, because they even, the camera even shows underneath the table. I'm like, <laughs> that. I'm like, Spanish news is so much worse than the English news. Trust me. I know I work in Spanish. I was going to say. <laughs> Yeah, and it's part that, of the reason why I left. But anyway, hot-blooded Latino, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So and now, so one of the things, and look at the time. I mean, things are really, really um, it's, it's clipping along here. Um, but I really like what you're saying about you live joyfully, just being. And I think that's probably a good example to other people. It's like you said, you live the gospel and sometimes use words. It's just being a loving, joyful person is attractive. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think as a Christian, we want other people to want what we have. And if we are mean to other people or judgmental with other people, nobody wants to be like that. Nobody that's not wants a good sign of Christianity. No, yeah, not. That's very Pharisee. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's not what God asks us to be. Right. Um, yeah. Uh, what's welcoming is people who are hospitable, people who are loving, nurturing, um, right. merciful. So that will it contribute to the divinization of his people. Yeah, absolutely. So can you like name drop some good names of people that have been very supportive and encouraging and accepting i guess you can say of you know because it's just you look at hollywood and you go oh it's just it's just a den of devils and the whole of hollywood just needs to break off and drop in the ocean and everybody needs to die i mean i have heard that more than once yeah from from good christian people it's just like so much evil comes out of hollywood we'd be better off if it just went away yeah and i think i have met so many people like we were talking about about screenwriters and and costume designers and, and cameramen and um, stunt people. And there are good people making inroads and changes in the industry. And we actually have some good programming coming out that we can actually watch. So are you seeing some of this goodness um, on the shows that you've done? Um, I don't watch TV anymore. <laughs> I right. haven't, because I began living an ascetic and monastic life about four plus years ago. So even though ironically, I work in the movie industry and television industry, I don't watch anything unless uh, it's like a movie premiere of a movie I worked on. And I'm, of course I would go, I still have fun, but I don't intentionally turn on TV or anything like that. Um, so, um, but I know, yes, there are people in my industry, specifically in my stunt world, that are awesome Christians that are actually trying to stand up for Christ. And I, I love that so much, you know, there's people like uh, Garrett Warren, Julie Michaels, you know, Greg Barnett, there's good people um, that, that love Jesus and they're not afraid to say it. And uh, these people are award-winning people like Emmys, they got SAG awards, I mean, tourist awards. I mean, this is amazing stuff. And so I really hope and pray that um, powerful instruments such as these will continue to stand up for Christ. And uh, I, I have hope. I have so much hope. And so for that reason, I have no reason to fear. And Pope John Paul II would reiterate to us, be not afraid, be not afraid. And so I have to live that way. Yeah. I, you know, just so many things about, and I, I've talked about a lot of people about this is that when you live each day as if it's your last, Right. And mm -hmm. I think it was St. Francis of Assisi. They said, if you knew today the world was going to end, what would you do? Mm -hmm. And he said, if I was sweeping the floor, I would just continue sweeping the floor. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to continue everything I do. I want to be honorable and to honor God. And so if that's what I was doing, I would do my best to sweep the floor and I'd finish doing it until the world ended. You know, mm -hmm. um, so it, it's just one of those things. So speaking of saints, who is your favorite saint? Ooh, that's hard. <laughs> I I have a few, but I mean, the ultimate favorite saint ultimately is the highest, greatest saint we have, which is our Blessed Mother Mary. Um, she is the best example for a woman. And so it is my job and our role as women to emulate her, imitate her as much as, as best as we can mm -hmm. in her grace. And But along those lines, my patron saint is Saint Mary Magdalene. And I relate to her so much, I feel. I love her so much. And, and then another one that I, I feel is like my sister 
and my other favorite saint. So my top three is Saint Claire of Assisi. And I have a special friendship with her as well. And of course, Francis of Assisi. I mean, I want to show you my socks. Is this weird? But I, I'm wearing <laughs> Francis of Assisi socks. I mean, there's my beautiful man right here. <laughs> I love him so much. I mean, That's great. <laughs> I, I, my rosary. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> But I love these people so much. I mean, they are such an inspiration to me. And, and I'm so thankful for these saints because they show us that it is possible to reach that height, the heights of holiness. And so I love them. Yeah. <laughs> How old were you when you picked St. Mary Magdalene as your patron saint? I think she picked me. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. I would say 14. Isn't that interesting? Because I know my, when my children picked their patron saints, right? It's, it, was, it was an interesting procedure. <laughs> And I, I truly believe that, you know, Saints pick us. Yeah, I, I do. And it's nice to have, you know, no matter what your your faith background or whatever, it's just nice to have examples of people who have lived good, moral, uh, amazing lives. And we can turn to them for advice. We can turn to them for help. We can emulate the, the, you know, some of the, the things that they, the good things that they did in their life. One of the things I always loved about St. Mary Magdalene, um, and, and you look at who was at the foot of the cross when when Jesus was on the cross. It was the sure. women. <laughs> it was our Blessed Mother and Saint Mary Magdalene, Saint John of the Cross. I mean, Saint Saint John, um, the beloved one. Yeah, Saint John. And, so I mean, it was, but really, it was the women that was there that were there, and and Saint Mary Magdalene. I mean, she she stood up to people her whole life. She didn't care what other people thought about her. That's she's so amazing, you know, so and so I've, I've always really, really and loved she, her. And she was her. the first whom Jesus appeared to at the resurrection. Yes. I mean, wow, this yeah. woman, I mean, she, this is, she gives so much hope to not just me, but to like everybody yeah. because she was in, in those days. And even now, I mean, a pretty terrible sinner. She, I mean, Jesus casted seven demons from her. If you think about seven deadly sins, seven deadly vices, that's all of them. She committed yeah. and broke every commandment possible yeah. and committed every vice. And he he healed her from her. And what happened? She was the most thankful, grateful young woman and never turned back. She never looked back. She just followed right. God. Now that's amazing. And that's why I love her so much. <laughs> yeah. yeah she is amazing she She's is so amazing cool. so and in speaking of being at the foot of the cross talking about the holy land you are arranging a pilgrimage i am <laughs> and i hope you guys can join me all of you who are watching please please join me i hope that there will be certitude and going at the end of this year we, of course we can never be so sure right now because covid is still ongoing right however um the the hope and the plan is that uh, I'll be leaving with a bunch of people to the Holy Land, including one of my favorite priests. Um, we would leave after Thanksgiving, so the weekend after Thanksgiving. Oh, okay. And uh, we would come back uh, on the Feast of the Immaculate Conception, December 8th, um, December 7th or 8th, one of those two. Right. Uh, I know her feast is on the 8th, but we might come back the day four. We'll see. I have to confirm. But I would love if you guys can join. I would be um, helping, you know, um, leading and showing around but i'm not the tour guide i'm just the host but i'll be doing i'll be providing spiritual reflections prayer i'd be happy to meet all of you oh it would, it's, it's gonna be a good time it's not only gonna be fun but it's gonna be deep because i enjoy the profound things of god and to transcend everything that i see and experience and i hope that you'll be willing to join me so good. Uh, well, i'll have all that information of how to contact you and everything yeah. gonna, i'll be in the show i notes. would love that so Thank people you. can reach out to you there. Thank and uh, if final question, sure. now looking back on your life, mm -hmm. looking back at the younger you, what advice now as the adult who's already been through it all, what advice would you give your younger self? Don't care about uh, the harsh people that uh, try to destroy the good and the joy that's in the inside of you. Because I had an encounter with evil, unfortunately. And as a young girl, I, I have always had a very innocent, pure, even naive outlook in life. Mm -hmm. um, um, and, you know, having had a terrible experience before, um, it changes a lot of things though I'm grateful. And this is a whole other talk, my friends, but it's a it's part of my testimony. So 
um, I went through a phase of depression and desolation and it was very bad actually, but I learned so much from it and I gained so much more compassion. But what I'm saying is that there's people that I've come across after I, I got healed from this uh, temporary circumstantial depression that I went through and desolation who tried to steal and destroy and kill the joy that God had restored in me. Cause I've always been joyful, but there was a moment in my life that that joy, well, my friends say they still saw me joyful, but I didn't feel it, but apparently I still was. And that's a gift. <laughs> anyway. So, but there's people who want, they, they, they want to steal that from you uh, out of envy. So be careful, but you know, don't be afraid of anybody still love your people. But, but just, I look at that and I say, um, there's, there's, you know, learn discernment at a younger age. And that's why discernment is so, so important. So that's what I would tell my younger self to learn the, 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 the ways of the spirit and to learn discernment, to learn what's really from God and what isn't. Yeah, that's really good. That's really good. Well, wonderful. Thank you so yeah. much for being here. We could go on forever and ever, ever. I know, I know, I know. So I'll have you back on and we'll talk about, absolutely. maybe we'll go through your whole, um, your story, your testimony. Oh, absolutely. And talk about that. And too. all the things that I do as a public speaker. I mean, there's so much that I am so excited to share and there's just no time now. I know. <laughs> out of time. That's funny. We try to keep it to 20 minutes. Yeah, that oh, wasn't going to happen. Oh my goodness, yeah. that was not. 20 minutes at all. That's I have no so idea. Funny. I haven't even looked at the time, although I, I, I did see my phone go off. So it's probably my assistant saying your next appointment is waiting. I know, I know. <laughs> so, but thank you for being here. And again, I appreciate you so much. Yeah, thank I you, appreciate Colleen. you too. I'm just I'm honored who you've met and, and that now we're lifelong friends. I feel I like love I, it. I said it, at my team meeting a couple of weeks ago, I said, oh my gosh, I felt like it was like my long lost sister that I was like, oh my gosh, I haven't talked to you in so long. So <laughs> I know. And I was like, we had to hang up because we both had appointments yes. after like two hours of talking and we could have kept talking i was like oh my goodness you're a blessing and i'm so honored and privileged that i got to be on your show today oh thank, thank you i i feel blessed and honored as well so we'll, we'll be friends for a very long time oh so amen anyway if you're listening to this on the podcast uh make sure you check out the show notes or where you can uh follow brenda and get more information about her schedule her as a speaker uh go with her to the pilgrimage and go to the holy land or uh whatever you else you want to do is for <laughs> third. And of course, uh, we do, since this is a new podcast, we do need those five-star ratings. Um, if you want to do a two, three, or four-star, don't worry about it. Just don't bother. But if you want to write us a five-star review, we could sure help uh, get us back up in, into the ratings and make this into a, a show that will bless and hopefully encourage others. So thanks for being with us today. And thank you again, Brenda. Uh, thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. <laughs> Take care. God bless. And we will see you next time.